Um, we're continuing with our, our Texas two-step this morning, so thank you for sticking with us. Um, as you guys know, Austin is known for embracing innovative technology solutions, and, and certainly the Austin Board of Realtors is no exception to that. We are a national leader in this industry, and ABOR empowers you and your agents every day by connecting you to the latest technology and, and things and tools that enhance your business. So through close collaboration with Realtor.com and NAR, ABOR and our members were selected to lead a new initiative to provide early feedback on solutions that are beneficial to the industry and to meet the needs of homeowners in the rapidly expanding online space. To introduce this exciting new program, our first speaker today is Tiffany Curry. I saw her in the back of the room. If she could make her way up front. Uh, Tiffany is a member of the NAR task force that helped develop this exciting new functionality that you're going to learn about today. Uh, in 2011, Tiffany was awarded the Houston Realtor of the Year, and she was the youngest recipient ever of that award. So please welcome mm -hmm. Tiffany Curry. Come on up. Thank you so much. Good morning. <laughs> How are you guys doing? Well, I've spent the morning looking at your new facility, and I have to say, uh, you guys have done an awesome, phenomenal job. I've never seen this. So I will definitely take this back to Houston because we do like to innovate, and we have nothing like this. So definitely. Well, as Barb mentioned, my name is Tiffany Curry, and I'm a full-time realtor in Houston. I have been involved with the association for many years, and um, for the over the past couple of years, I've worked with NAR um, and the Consumer Relations Pack. Um, so what's happening is with NAR, we of course you guys know that a couple of years ago that NAR voted to have more of an input in Realtor.com, and our president Steve Brown put together a PAG um, to come up with what they felt the consumer of the future looked like, what the needs were going to be for real estate as outside threats continue to impose on our business. So eight things were came out of that work group, and one of the most important is the one that I got tasked with, which was the realtor ratings. And you may say, well, realtor ratings are already around. And yes, they already are around. They're on every major web portal um, that you can think of, from Yelp to our other competitors. Um, but what NAR felt is for it. Realtor.com, we wanted to have an input on what our ratings and reviews would look like. So that means that we wanted to, to we wanted to have, um, not going to say control, but we wanted to influence what people were saying about us, but also how we responded. So over the last year and a half, we've worked diligently um, on putting something together, and we're excited that Realtor.com has embraced the Realtor community and allowed us to sit on this work group for the past year. So what you're going to see today is the results of that. Um, it's a realtor ratings by realtors in, in, in conjunction with realtor.com. So we're really excited about that. Um, we've had a mix of realtors on our original work group. This, this has gone through three different work groups. So it's been very well vetted. And I'm so excited that Austin, Texas and Rhode Island were selected to be the beta testers. Um, and we're very excited to have that in Texas. Um, I'm doing the strat planning um, chairmanship for TAR this year. So I'm really excited that we're getting, that Texas is having a chance to actually beta this. And you guys should be very proud because a third of your membership already has their profiles, uh, which is the main reason that you were chosen. So if you don't have your profiles, they're going to give you an opportunity to get them up. But this is very well uh, thought out and run. And we actually looked at one of the most successful brokerages in the U.S. who spends hundreds of thousands of dollars on their, their website. And the realtor ratings and reviews that we're kicking out has a lot of very similar things to that, but it's coming to you at no additional cost. So I want to make sure you guys go in and get your profiles uploaded. Um, and just so you know, the benefit of, I'm not sure if you know, that. I guess everybody here knows what Uber is. And the, re the reason that we came up with this is because we, we recognize that the economy is changing. Um, the world is changing. And if you look at Uber, it's now a multi-billion dollar company, but they don't own any cars. They don't any, own any cars. They provide technology. So I was riding over with an Uber driver to the airport yesterday, and he was telling me that he gives them 25% 
of what he makes, but the car is his, uh, the service is his, everything that he's doing is his, but they're getting 25% and they're already a multi-billion dollar corporation. So we don't wanna see that happen to real estate. We wanna influence what happens to us and we wanna take control. So today, um, you guys will benefit for the last two years of work that we've done to progress realtor.com to keep us at the forefront. So next I'm gonna introduce Jack Miller, and I know a lot of you already know him with T3, and he's gonna discuss trends and online reputation. Jack. Tiffany, thank you for the very kind introduction. Um, well, it's a, a real privilege to come and speak with this group here today um, when Abor and Move called and said, you know, Austin is going to play a role as a digital leader in the industry with this new product, could you come and talk uh, to the group about why it's important and what's happening in the market? So my background is I've been in the industry about 15 years. I'm a member of ABOR. Uh, I've been, a, been involved with brokerages, with franchises. Uh, I've worked for Gary Keller when we were building that franchise system. And I've consulted with hundreds and hundreds of brokerages and agents all throughout the country. I also work with Stefan Swanepoel and we do studies of the industry. We produce an annual trends report. We study consumers, we study the industry, we study all the people in it, uh, and we publish uh, books and research and give talks about what's happening in the industry. So to set up what Move has done, which I think is super cool. I think they've done something that's really hard to do. They've taken a very large national association with agents, new in their career, who've been in it a long time, people that run teams, people that run franchises, people that run brokers, and they've come up with a solution that I think reasonably pleases, can please everybody. I think that that's super hard to do. If you've been involved with association leadership and associations for any period of time, that's a tough thing to pull off. I wanna talk about why they did it, and then a little bit about some of the things that I see that they have done really well. So when you go through the demo, you'll see uh, how cool it is. So the first thing I want to emphasize is this is where customers are today. Homeowners and home, uh, home buyers don't understand uh, your job. They don't understand what realtors do. They don't understand what agents do. They don't understand the difference. Uh, they just don't know. I mean, one of the reasons that our industry keeps getting a lot of press and people say, oh, well, they're going to be replaced, they're going to be Ubered, they're going to be whatever, is because there are many people in the tech industry that look and go, hey, you guys open doors for a living. Isn't that what you do? That sounds like an Uber job. We can make that. We can do that, right? And part of that just comes from a lack of knowledge about what it is that real estate agents and realtors do every day and how they do it and how they satisfy and work with their customers. The consumer is super hungry for this information. I'll, I'll, I'll bring up some, some stats. So they don't know if you're, if you're a good fit for them. They don't have a good way to tell that easily. They rely on trust networks. Uh, this is still a repeat and referral industry, although that's slowly changing as time goes by. They still rely on talking to friends and family members about who they trust, but they're thirsty. They're hungry for help understanding who they can trust who is real and who can help them with the biggest transaction they're gonna do in their lives, most likely, and that they're gonna do infrequently. So they're not gonna get really familiar with it to understand all the ins and outs of it. If you only do something every five or seven years, you're just not gonna figure that out. So the way we know that they're hungry for it are some of the stats. This was a study that was done by a company called Bright Local. They survey about 3,000 consumers every year in the US about how they shop for local services. These are things like plumbers, appraisers, uh, their you know, car repair people, and yes, real estate agents. And what they found is every year this number goes up. 92% of people in their survey are using online reviews and ratings in order to determine who they should consider using. So when 90% of an audience is doing it, the consumer is there. They're already there. Fortunately, a third of our membership, it sounds like, are already taking action and have set up profiles and are doing things, and that's good, but it leaves two-thirds that are not. And so this is an education piece for us, is that the consumer's already there. 40% of that audience, they make their determination by reading less than three reviews. So you don't need 50 reviews or 60 reviews or 10, even 10 reviews. If you've got three or four online reviews or ratings of your uh, profile, then they're gonna use that information, that's enough. So you don't need a lot, so that's kind of good news. Uh, and that number's been going down as people have gotten more comfortable with it. The star rating is the big thing. People are looking at how many stars and they're going, ah, I'm just not gonna do, Who, does anybody here eat at a Yelp restaurant with less than three stars? I didn't think so, 
right? So people kind of go, ah, Yelp's trained them. All of the other rating and review systems have trained them. They look at the star rating. It's a shortcut for their decision making. And that's how they do it. They act quick uh, and they, they look at that and they go, it looks like five reviews, four stars. I'm in. I know where I'm having lunch today, right? So that's where they are. And they're that way with across all industries. The last piece here is that people look at how recently reviews have been written online in order to help them make a decision about what to do. A review from five years ago or a testimonial isn't very relevant to the consumer shopping today, and they know that. So they're looking for, what has this person done in the last month or six weeks or three months? How active are they? What are they doing? And so they care about recency. That matters. And that's across the entire survey in all categories. So we know that that's true. And the last piece that is apparent from all of this is that uh, customers are concerned about these rating systems. They are concerned about them being accurate. And I think that's one of the hardest things for our industry is that we go into it and you set up a profile and you're like, well, what if somebody writes a bunch of you know, bad reviews about me that aren't real? And some, it's somebody just trying to trip me up, right? Well, consumers are concerned about false reviews and there's things that we need to do to make sure they don't happen. And I'm really pleased with what Move has done in order to eliminate that from happening, to make it very, very hard or, or almost impossible for there to be false reviews and bad reviews. Because consumers do rely on this and they want to know that the data is good. They want to know that it's complete and that it hasn't been monkeyed with by somebody. Okay? So those, that's what's going on in the consumer space. Lastly, mobile has played a huge role in this. Who here has read a review for something in the last week and done something immediately with it? Gone to a restaurant? called somebody, right, Th this is where we are now. We have a supercomputer on our pocket. We can say, I need to fix my car. Where is the nearest place that's reputable because it needs to happen right now? We're the Amazon Prime generation. We're the Amazon now. We want it done, right? So we're not waiting around. When people use stuff on mobile, they act. And now that this is happening 54% on mobile, whatever solution you have in place, it needs to just work there and be awesome there. Again, I'm really pleased with what Move has done and Realtor.com is providing to the Austin Water Realtors for this. So super cool stuff. This is from a separate study. Forrester Research studied um, buyers in different uh, categories of financial power and said, okay, if we break out people by financial power and also by age, how, how do they use reviews? Now, Forrester looked at a much bigger data set with hundreds and hundreds of thousands of people. They looked at online buying patterns. They found that the more affluent people were, the more they used online reviews. The more they looked at agent reputation or reputation of whoever they were considering buying from as a determining factor. So the more money they made, I mean, it kind of makes sense, right? If you've got a person who's savvy and who makes a lot of money, wouldn't it make sense that they might be smarter shoppers and they'd use more tools, they'd spend more time on the process? Who here has bought something on Amazon and then gone back and read the reviews for the product again just because that's the kind of shopper they are? I don't know. Yeah, we've got at least a few in here. My, my, my wife does it all the time. I do it. I'm like, I bought it and I go read the reviews because I like being informed about the things that I'm buying. And I learn things from what people write in those reviews. The other thing they found is that the younger demographics use reviews more. So the people that have grown up with these systems, they're used to them. They're used to getting online. They're used to getting the information. Uh, they're not going to pick up the phone and call a friend and say, hey, who should I use for this? They're just going to go online and solve the problem. And those are the people that are moving into the prime time of their buying and selling years. You know, we're talking about millennials and Gen X who is already there. They're used to it. They want it. They want it more than anybody else. So all the consumer information tells us that this is, I mean, it's already this isn't a trend. It's like, in many ways, it's already happened. It was an emerging trend about five years ago. It's now at full expression. It's fully expressed in all industries, across all segments, across all demographics, that this is a major big deal, that we show up and play in this space as an industry. And that's why what Move has done is so important, is that we now have a very powerful option to be in this space that the National Association and the work group have gotten together and put together in a way that's, that's very effective and fair. Now, this was an, a big trend that we had been tracking for a while at T3, but we noticed that the industry wasn't engaging with it. There weren't enough people. It's like, why doesn't everybody have, a, you know, have their profile set up? Why doesn't everybody go get some reviews from, from past clients or get some testimonials or something? What's going on? So we asked the question a different way. Uh, we did our own study and said, is this helping agents make money? 
if you have more reviews or if you have a strong online reputation, is it helping you make more money? And so we surveyed almost 1,000 agents. It was 954 agents. And we did in-depth interviews with about 20 of them to get this information. So we commissioned a study. We did it last year. I'm not going to go through the whole study. I have a one-hour presentation. We go through the whole study. We go through the facts and the figures and the, all the, the, everything that we did to come up with that. That's not the purpose today. But I'm going to give you a few of the high points that lead into that, that go into that. We looked, this is from the top segment. We studied people by income and by production, and then we asked them a whole series of questions. The top segment, agents who were selling 51 or more homes a year from the study, they prioritized reviews the most when we surveyed the entire group of almost 1,000 agents. The more productive they were, the higher priority they placed on reviews as part of their business. They said they were more likely to say it was important and impactful in their business. They also used portals the most. They used Realtor.com, they used Zillow, they used Trulia, they used websites to generate new business. And so they were more likely to be engaged with portals and do that. And then finally, this group had up to three times the level of sales as the median participant in our group. So they were very productive, uh, very productive agents within this group. What we learned from those top producers was that the more the people were effective at selling, the more they considered reviews a valuable part of their strategy and necessary to increase their lead generation capacity and their business generation capacity. We also asked it, across the entire study, we said, you know, are these leads, are people that contact you through an online review more more easy to work with than other kinds of people that get in touch with you. And 70% said they were relatively easy or very easy. Those are the top two categories. So 70% of people said, when we get people that contact me from an online review site, from a Yelp, from a Google review, from a Zillow profile page, these are some of the easiest people that I work with because it kind of makes sense. They've been pre-sold. They've gone and read a bunch of reviews or seen some reviews on a profile, and then they've reached out to you. They've already picked you. There's, there's not really a lot of selling to do there. It's, it's kind of like once you've made up your decision about where you're going to eat based on the number of stars, you don't show up to the restaurant and ask for a presentation. You know, you've already made up your mind. And it's the same thing that's happening here with reviews in our industry as reported by people that are generating prospects and leads that are coming through these portals and websites is that these are you know, much easier people to work with. And in my mind, that's better. I mean, that's a better consumer experience to have the consumer pick you and say, you look like a really good option. When can we get together and talk? And then you set a time and then you're done. And then my experience in building our brokerage and our lead generation department, I handled over 2,200 internet leads over a two year period personally. And then I trained a team to do this. We noticed this. All the leads that we got and contacts that we got that were related to reviews were just the easiest ones ever. So I have my own anecdotal experience with thousands of internet leads that tells me this is a better quality prospect to talk to. I will spend time to increase the, my reviews online so that I get easier to convert business. People that already are sold, already want to work with me or with my company. So the big message I have for this industry is that this is a complicated industry. Agents do a lot of stuff for our customers. I mean, everything from going by and watering people's lawns that are dying because it's the Texas summer, to pulling dead animals out of a garage, to negotiating with an agent on the other side of a transaction who maybe hasn't had as much experience and is new, to um, you know talking to a homeowner who went on a site and thinks they're the value of their home is really a lot higher than it is actually realistic. So we have to be sophisticated, capable professionals in order to really do this job well. And it's hard to explain that to a consumer who only really interacts with us once every five to seven years. So we need to do a better job of explaining who we are and what we do and how we help people. We need to show people. We need to lead them, we need to guide them. And I think the National Association of Realtors has taken, uh, working with MOVE, has taken a very strong position by doing this and saying we're going to do it in a fair and equitable fashion for all agents. It's a big tent, and we need to help all agents take advantage of their reputation online in order to generate business. Consumers, are, they need our help understanding us. They may be asking questions like, who's active in my area? Who's selling in my area? Who's truly an expert? And then what are the people that have actually done business with them or that know them saying about them? 
they don't have any other way to really get this information except from us. We have to provide it in order for them to make better decisions. What we get in return is we get a customer that's better educated, that's easier to close, that's easier to get into an appointment, and it's more likely to work with you. That's what we get in return for giving them some of, hey, here's what we do. Here's listings I've taken. Here's transactions I've done. Here's what people have said about me, and here's how people have rated my performance. In return, we get better customers back, and we don't have to call back all these internet leads that maybe aren't going to do anything ever. Okay? So that's it. So as an industry researcher watching this space, you know, I'm, I'm always about what's next. You know, who's going to innovate in this space and do something really interesting, really cool, that's going to improve the consumer experience, that's going to make our lives as realtors, our jobs, easier and better, that's going to allow us to have customers that are the right customers for us. They're not, you know, from some area that we don't do any business. They're people that found us and said, hey, you, I want to work with you because you look like you're the right agent for me. So I'm always I'm asking that question. And I think that Realtor.com, working with the National Association of Realtors, has taken this next step in the profile that you're going to see and in the things that you've done. It's more accurate. It's based on our data, on all of the data that is on all the MLSs. It respects teams. It respects new agents who are just starting in the industry. And it respects agents that have been highly productive for years and years. It reflects all of that in a way that's accurate and fair and that we got in a, in a whole room together and figured out with a group of agent realtors and MOVE and the National Association. And I think that's super cool, super hard to pull off, and I think MOVE has done it. So with that, I'd like to introduce Andrew Dorn, who is with MOVE, who's going to talk to us about the new profiles today. And I want to say thank you for your time. I hope it was valuable learning about the modern consumer and what they're doing. Thanks, Jack. How are we doing today? Um, just so I really understand the audience better, quick show of hands. Um, how many are here to learn about your online reputation? That's why you're here today. Okay. And then how many are here to learn about the new Realtor.com profile that's launched? Okay, good, good, good. And then how many came here just hoping to get a free cup of coffee? Okay. A couple of you? Okay, I didn't expect that. My name's Andrew Dorn. I represent Tech Savvy Agent. I'm uh, employed by Move, and I'm excited to be here today because we've got some great stuff to share with you today. And it's all about the new Realtor.com agent profiles, and you guys right in this room being early adopters, right? So Austin was selected along with Rhode Island to be the early adopters for this beta profile, and I'm so excited to share it with you. Now. Your online, your online reputation is so important right now because of what Jack said. The world and the country, the U.S., is living on this five-star system, aren't they? Because raise your hand if you have Amazon Prime, for example. Half of us, right? Two-day free shipping. And every other service like it is that way. So in this digital world, we want your visibility to be improved where they find you easily. And when they do find you, you're beautiful. In addition, we want to enhance your brand. And that means not only having a nice picture up, but also when they search for you as a realtor, you come up with information that is, shows that you're credible, shows that you've done business in the area, shows that you are a real estate professional that has the knowledge. And then as far as building trust, that's what those recommendations and reviews are all about. Because I'm going to get to a slide shortly that shows how much Americans rely on recommendations and how much how they treat them. So the agenda really is showing you the importance of your online reputation. You guys have been selected, so we're going to launch the right here, right now, because Rhode Island's not till Friday. You guys are the first ones to see this. The new Realtor.com beta search, the new profile, the new real rating system. There's nothing like it. And the next steps for you right now today, what you can do today to claim your profile and get it done. Now, before I leave this slide, I speak across the country all year long with Tech Savvy Live. You might have heard of it. And we, we'll, we'll speak in front of 300 people. And what I'll tell them about the online reputation is that more and more, I have realtors come to me at the breaks when I'm speaking in front of a large audience. They'll come to me and say, Andrew, I advertise a lot, like in, online, on the local newspaper in the real estate section. I, uh, I'll have some people say I do park benches. And I'll get people that, that call me and say, I read your reviews online after I saw your ad, I read your reviews online, and then I decided to call you. 
That's happening more and more, not just in real estate, more and more in every single industry because it's just so easy. So keep that in mind as we go throughout this is that it's not going to slow down. It's going to speed up how many more people in real estate that are considering buying or selling are actually going to go ahead and Google you first. It's too easy. It's too, you can do it for everything else. Uh, so, and when, when we show this slide, 90% of us trust recommendations. This is straight from socialnomics.com. And only 18% of us trust advertisements. And with the online world, it's so easy to find the recommendations. If you don't mind me using the example of Amazon Prime, we can go and type in any product and find out real quickly which ones are the four plus stars and which ones are the two minus stars. And we're definitely not gonna buy the two minus stars, right? So that's the way the world's going with restaurants, products, and whatnot. So we trust what people, real people, say about product and services. Do you agree with that? And that's where the world's going, and it's so easy to do. Now, do you check reviews? Now, I, I heard him, uh, excuse me, him, Jack Miller, mention uh, restaurants, for example. What is the spot to search for restaurants if you want to find the most reviews? You may not love it, but it's Yelp, okay? Like them, love them, whatever you want. But Yelp is the clear winner. What is the clear spot for hotels? Is, there, is it as clear as Yelp? Name a few. Hotels, I heard TripAdvisor, Expedia, it's not as clear. How about we talk about buying a, your next book to read? What would the, the most reviews, most stellar, or like powerful reviews, number of reviews be? Amazon, probably the clear winner. And so I, I truly believe that right now, there is no clear-cut winner for real estate. I really believe that Realtor.com is one of the top. I mean, definitely in the top five, if, top five, if not higher. But there are, there are a few places right now. And so it's not just a magic bullet. It's, I'm not going to say here today that if you do Realtor.com, you're done. It's not that way. Now, do we want to be that way? Do we want to be the Yelp of, of real estate? Absolutely. So just like Yelp is for restaurants, that would be the case for Realtor.com. And we're working every day toward that with a huge ad campaign. And you'll see more and more of those across major TV shows, such as David Letterman, things like that, where we're going to show Realtor.com has the best accuracy of data. It's updated in most cases every 15 minutes, things like that that the consumer really wants. And I'm going to show you a slide in a bit how that turns into you are more likely selected on Realtor.com than any other large national real estate portal. So that's a huge deal. And it's because we have the most accurate data. Let's check this out. Now, I, I truly believe there couldn't be a better time for you to start bolstering your online reputation right now. And the, one of the reasons is, here's a, a stat, and you can see the stat at the bottom. This is straight from 2014 NAR profile of home buyers and sellers. And in that, in that question, or in that profile, they said, what percentage of buyers, asking buyers, what percentage of buyers used online recommendations in 2014? So go ahead and call it out. What do you think that number is, a percentage of buyers that used recommendations. Go ahead. 80, uh, 45, what else? 95, that is probably the highest I've ever heard. I think we're going that direction, but here's the number. Wow, surprise some of you? About 20 out of 100 buyers used recommendations. So if there's ever been a time, it's now. The time is right, right now. So they also asked this question though in the same survey by NAR. How many more would consider using them next time? And that number is 38% more. So basically we're talking about when you combine the two, almost 60% cons will consider using the reviews next time. And with all the things I mentioned with Yelp, all these other hotel sites where you can check reviews, Amazon, all these places, we're becoming accustomed that this is how we can make a good selection, isn't it? We can make a good selection by reading actual people reviews. Real people that tried the service, tried the product, and it's just gonna be more and more that way. We're gonna get more used to it, and I, I really don't think it's gonna change. I really think we're gonna keep living on this five-star system. It's too easy, right? I mean, if I came here to Austin, and I really wanted sushi, and I went, excuse me, if I went to Yelp, and I said sushi, am I even gonna consider, like Jack said, am I gonna consider one even under 2.5 stars? Probably not. I'm looking for the three and a half and hopefully a four plus. And that's what we're all doing. Now, if that's not enough for you, 
if I didn't convince you yet that it's time to, and I'm going to show you how to do it at the end of what you can, what you can do today to establish and claim your profile, Google is the number one search engine in the world. You're like, duh. <laughs> yeah, it is. And, and you know what? They want it to maintain that way. They want it to keep it that way forever. That would be their goal. So what they do, and a lot of you use their services, is provide a lot of free services, don't they? Raise your hand if you use Google Voice. A third of you. Raise your hand if you use Google Alerts. Almost 40%. That's great. I'm going to show you that in a second. It can really help you understand what's being said about you, good or bad. There's another tool. It's called Google Trends. How do you find it? You go to Google and you type in trends. Check out how cool this is. You go to Google, type in trends, click trends, you're there. Um, I'm almost positive you do need a Gmail address. Like most of their services, you need to sign up for a Gmail address, an email address. Once you go there, it allows you, again, because they want to be really sticky, and they don't want Yahoo to win the game, they want Google to win the game. You with me? So they provide this tool where you can type in any word or phrase and see how that's been tracking, meaning how many other people are typing that over the last eight to 10 years. And so we at Move went ahead and typed in Realtor Reviews and look at, look at how it's tracking. It's going up and up. So if, it, if the information I shared with you before wasn't convincing you that it's important to build your online profile, that says it right there, meaning more and more people not only are searching for your name and Googling, you know, Mary Jane, Smith, searching that. They're also going to Google and just typing real true reviews because you know why? More and more we, tr we, we trust what Google says. Meaning, if I go to Google and type in real true reviews, I'm probably thinking a, a pretty good result is going to be first. Are you with me? A pretty darn good result, I meaning a, probably a pretty good site that has real true reviews is what I'm, what I'm getting at. And more and more people are saying, yes, I want, I want a site where I can check out actual people talking about this real estate agent before I make a decision, before I call them. Now check this out. I, I, I think, I think uh, Jack did mention this, but I, I want to put a little spin on this for you. We should love, love leads from our reviews, okay? And as, as Jack said, <laughs> Jack Miller said, if you choose a restaurant based on the review, do you go into the restaurant and ask for a presentation why I should eat here? No, no, you would never expect that, right? Here's the case. If they Google you or go to realtor.com or one of the other top review sites and they don't like it, do you even get the phone call? That's it. And you don't even know you didn't get the phone call right? If you, if you didn't have enough of an online reputation to make them call. And let me just take it one step further and have some fun with this. So let's say someone in this room, I'm not going to point any names because I don't want to embarrass anybody. Someone in this room on, uh, let's just go with Yelp because we already talked about it. They, they handle realtor reviews as well. I mean, they, they take real estate reviews and, uh, you know, clients are allowed to do that. And you are an agent in this room that has 10 reviews on Yelp and seven are negative, three are positive. Are you with me so far? Do you think that someone who found that on Yelp is going to look at that and, say, and, and then call you and say, are those seven negative ones real? I really like the three good ones. Are, are, I mean, one person said something really bad. About, is that true? No, you don't get the call. Am, am I right? Just like if uh, you, sir, were going to buy a scooter for your son and uh, you know, you've, you found a scooter, it says it's got 30 reviews and, and 19 are negative and 11 are positive. Would you ever even consider buying a scooter? No, you wouldn't. And, and then, but if that same, if a different scooter on the same page says it has 200 reviews, uh, let's say 100, 180 are fives, meaning it ends up with an average of 4.7, even though there's three one reviews out of the 200, you with me so far? Would you buy the scooter? Sure, probably would. I did, I did it last week, <laughs> right? Because we're used to that now. In fact, I just want to make one point. Jack briefly talked about how people, consumers, are starting to get concerned about fake reviews. Meaning, let's say, um, let's say I'm into um, Mexican food, and I pull into Austin uh, out of my flight, and I'm hungry. <laughs> Because I didn't, I sat in the back of the bus and there was no food, so I'm I'm driving around and I I go to I go to my Yelp, and I say I say 
Mexican food search, and I get all of these, these ratings here, right here. And if I see one that is 10, follow me on this, 10 reviews, all perfect fives. Am I, are some people savvy enough to think this? Oh, that's probably the cook, the owner, their sister, their brother. I mean, 10's not enough, right, in that case. I mean, the other restaurants have 70 reviews, and they, you know, they have a few mediocre ones. And they, maybe they'll choose one that has 65 stars, but then there's a few fours, a few threes. Are you with me? Does it make it a little more realistic? Are you experiencing that? Or is everything you buy perfectly five? No, it's almost like, is that really real? Is that, is that true? So keep that in mind as far as when you do, let's say, on one of the top review sites, get a mediocre review, but it's kind of true. For whatever reason, maybe you, you forgot something. It's, it's not... It's not blatantly negative. It's just like you forgot to do something or you, 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 you missed something in the contract, something, something minuscule that gave them a three or two. I'm just telling you, you might want to consider, depending on how many positive reviews you have, let's say you have tw 20 positive reviews right now, maybe you keep it just because that's what Americans are experiencing and the other things. Are you with me? With hotels, with books, with restaurants. That's what they're getting. Hardly anybody's buying a complete five, right? We're, we understand that's the way it works. So keep that in mind. So they're easy to convert. Now, we, ha we talked about Google Voice, and I didn't expand on it, but Google Voice is a free tool, and if you don't know about it, write it down. How do you find it? Google Voice. It gives you a dedicated free phone number that you can program what you want to do when it's called. So this is probably gonna be like your main lead number. It's the phone number on your yard signs. It's the phone number where you, when someone calls, it's probably a buyer or seller, and you wanna say hello, right? So what it allows you to do is say, well, Google Voice says program it to ring me first. The, I'm the team leader, okay? Then ring my team member. Then ring my next one until someone says hello because we know how important fast follow-up is, right? I mean, the, the stats on that are unbelievable, compelling that responding in that magic five minutes is gonna give you way more success contacting them if, than if you do more than 30 minutes, for example. Okay, so Google Alerts is another tool. We talked about Google Voice. Google Alerts is something that allows you, again, for free, from Google, you can create a, as many of these as you want, alerts, where you're gonna say, hey, alert me if my name is mentioned online. So if it's in the local newspaper or a local blog or LinkedIn, for example, or one of the sites that's online, it, it searches, it scrubs the internet for your name. Now, bless you, if your name is Joe Smith, does that work pretty well for you? <laughs> no, because you get Joe Smith the cook, you get Joe Smith, the golfer. You get Joe Smith, the baseball player, and the other 40,000 Joe Smiths in the United States. So, so if your name is that common, Steve Smith, you got to give it a little more love, meaning your alert would be Steve Smith, Realtor Austin. Follow me? Then it's going to search for that. You got it? Because otherwise you're going to get all the names. So, but if you're, if you're very unique, like a good friend of mine has a very unique name, the only two people that come up are him and his dad. That's it for all of his alerts. Now, just to, to give you some fun, I've done, I, have, I have Andrew Dorn, I have um, for alerts, Andrew Dorn speaker, and I have tech savvy agent, all these different alerts. The only, I, I didn't know my name was this unique, but the only other Andrew Dorn that I get alerts for is this young PGA golfer, like 20 year old, who's killing it. And it's like, I haven't even turned it off because now I'm following his career. It's like, hi, how you doing, man? You know, I mean, your same name. I'm thinking about maybe Facebooking him and saying, hey, we have the same name. Isn't that cool? Give me some free tickets to when you make the U.S. Open. All right. So the other most common ways are members of your team. Raise your hand if you're in a team. Keep your hand raised if you're a team leader. Okay. So you can share this with your team leader. Why not? Why wouldn't your team leader want to know if the team member is mentioned? Of course you would. You, you want to know what's said about them, whether it be negative or positive. Uh, the, the other things are the name of your brokerage. It sure would be nice if you knew what your brokerage is doing before your clients do. So if they hosted a golf tournament you didn't know about and it was in the online newspaper and it's there, you probably want to be notified. Or anything else said positive or negative about the brokerage. Uh, biggest competitors, that's smart. Just to know what your biggest competitor is doing. So you get being alerted as anything's mentioned online about your main competitor in the market. And then last but not least, local market, meaning... Uh, Raise your hand if you work a community within Austin that it's your farm. What's, what's it called? Fugerville? Uh, I would go Fugerville. I would have alert for that. Fugerville Real Estate. Uh, Fugers, Fuger, 
it's hard to say, three times. Fuger, <laughs> Fugerville um, Realtor, maybe. There are some examples of what you might do. Because, <laughs> li- yeah, no way. I'm not going to try to spell it. I'm not going to try to spell it. But let me ask you this. Even, <laughs> what's your name? Teresa. Thanks for making everybody laugh with me. That was fun. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Teresa, riddle me this one. Would you be even interested if the community of I'm not going to say it, Pflugerville, is mentioned outside of real estate. Anything, right? If something was happening in the community, uh, some, I don't know, some big barbecue that's an annual, you know what I'm saying? Would you want to know that? Great. So that's that's a way to use local market. Now, I was speaking in front of 400 people, I think it was in Orlando, and I had this slide up, something like this, and I said, hey, anybody else use this for anything real estate? Do you, anybody else use Google Alerts in a different way? And one woman raised her hand. I said, stand up. What, what is it? This is a big group. And she says, Andrew, I do a Google Alert for every listing I take. I put the listing address there. And I went, I, don't, I thought I know what she meant. I'm like, oh, wait, I know what she's going to say. And she goes, yeah, because a lot of real estate agents, they're actually repurposing my listing and putting it on Craigslist. Anybody ever had that happen to them or ever heard of it happen to someone else? Okay, so that's another one. Wouldn't you want anything being said about your listing to be notified? Absolutely. Uh, I'm not going to take a risk and have someone not have an idea for a seventh or a sixth reason. Uh, but again, Google Alerts can help you with your online reputation because you want to be notified not only for positive comments, which mostly you'll get, but for also negative comments. Would you agree with that? You want to know right away. You want to know right away before a client knows. First of all, there might be a situation where it's a blatant lie and you have a possibility in that online form to delete that or at least protest that. Does that make sense? So you can fix it maybe in a day or two or immediately. So again, you want to know those things and and it helps a lot. As far as going back to your profile and the word realtor, I got some great news for you. It's just, it's very important to realize the power of the Realtor.com name because what happens is not only is Realtor.com a top-ranked search site, but what happens is 70% of agent profile traffic is from organic search, meaning on Bing, Yahoo, Google. That's how the traffic's coming from. They, they mean, the meaning that Google and those other search engines say, no, we, we rate Realtor.com high. They're going to come up first if you type in Realtor uh, or at least close to first. In addition, we talked about Google. Are some of your clients or potential clients savvy enough? What's your name? I'm going to pick on her all day. Teresa Tabs. Teresa Tibbs is right here. Are, and that's probably a pretty unique name, by the way, going back to Google Alerts. So you probably could just do Teresa Tibbs or maybe even add the word realtor. But let's go back to the Google search. I get a recommend, recommendation about Teresa or I see her ad, okay? And instead of, of, I'm gonna Google her now. I'm a client, I'm a potential client, I'm a customer, I'm gonna Google her. Instead of just saying, Teresa Tibbs search, now, I instead say, Teresa Tibbs realtor. Are some people gonna do that to make Google smarter? I see heads nodding, yes. So guess what? <laughs> You're gonna do very well when that happens as far as your realtor.com profile. Your realtor.com presence is gonna come near the top. Most of the time I do it, when I add any, take any realtor and, and somewhat of a unique name, right, it comes up first. By far for me, most of the time. Uh, but normally you'll be one or two, uh, and, and I've, never, I've never personally seen it not in the top four. If you add the word realtor to that realtor name. Now again, if you have more of a common name, you're probably going to add, you know, that they work in Austin. So keep that in mind, leverage that, and that's one of the huge powers of having that domain that, that uh, NAR owns that name and, and we operate for them. The Realtor.com brand helps you on the Google search in a big way. Now, here is your, your profile in action. And I want to I wanna share something here. The left side is something that all of you will be in about five hours is my hope. You will be a, a realtor that has claimed their profile, added their photo, added their bio, and guess what? Now your photo is there. The one on the right poor people that are not here. I call that, the one on right, I call that a secret agent. <laughs> oh, you don't want to be a secret agent as a realtor. You don't want to hide in a box. And so, so there's no photo and there's no uh, bio. There's no additional information like credentials and, and things. So guess what? 
claiming your profile, which you, hopefully all of you do today, today uh, adding your picture, and adding your bio can only boost up your results when they search. It can only boost them up, okay? And I'm gonna show you in a, in a second the default for when you search for a realtor on realtor.com. It's very powerful, and it relates to your photo of your face. It relates to your photo and how that works. So we're gonna go over that in a second, but again, please don't be the one on the right. Do not hide and do not be a secret agent. Uh, more consumers, actually, we talked about this. I, I said I was going to mention this slide. More consumers pick agents off Realtor.com than anywhere, even if, even if you are a big, giant real estate search engine. It doesn't matter. Look at this. This is the latest study. Uh, again, this is, from, this is from NAR. And even more than Zillow, Trulia, more people choose Realtors on Realtor.com. Let me tell you why this is the case, in my opinion and in my peers' opinion. Because they are farther along in their search on Realtor.com. Meaning the savvy people, and even the non-savvy people, uh, probably a lot of them, they realize if they've been told, they found out, they've seen a review, they've seen it online, that Realtor.com is the only one that updates listings every 15 minutes for about 90% of MLSs, including yours. Does that make sense? So in other words, if they're, they're doing Zestimate type things and they're seeing potentially stale listings, potentially, um, they're probably not as far along. They probably might ask a friend, hey, where's the site where it's like updated? Because we really want to home this neighborhood and we want to know right when it comes on the market. And also we want to know right when a price change happens, we want to be updated within 15 minutes. Pretty cool. So that's the reason I believe that they're more likely to choose you. And I think that, no I, I hope, and I think that number will only increase as we continue to have the best, most accurate, timely data, period, realtor.com. Now, what are you gonna get with your profile? You basically, you're gonna get, no matter who you are, or what agent you are, you're gonna be able to promote your personal brand, showcase your trustworthiness and expertise, and have that huge first impression where, again, let's say they Google your name, realtor, and then it's number one, which will be majority of the time, uh, you're gonna have that first impression right there with a the photo. It shows that you're kind of, your bio's filled out. It's gonna show that you, you, you're an actual live realtor that's not hiding and, and it's just a blank face. And then obviously connecting with more buyers and sellers. We not only are upgrading, not upgrading, it's a brand new profile as realtor.com. are not just doing it because um, we wanted to make you happy because you have something free now. We want it at the end of the day, years to come, we want as many leads as possible coming off your profile as humanly possible because we know those are the best leads you can get. I mean, other than a, your best friend referring you so strongly or your mom referring you, you want people that call you off your recommendations. We went over that. They, they already have one foot in the door. They called you because they had a good experience after they Googled you or went to Realtor.com or review site. Does that make sense? They chose to call you. So these are very, very powerful leads. They're farther along. But no matter where you are, whether you're a new agent, listing agent, buyer agent, you're a team, we, there's something for you with the profile, no matter what. Let me break this down a little bit for you. So if you're a listing agent, it's gonna increase your visibility, including on a map type search, You'll, you'll get to see where your solds are in, in, in some MLSs, in some cases, and I know we're working on something awesome with Austin on that, and where your first sales are, for example. For buyer's agents, uh, one of the cool things about it is your transactions that you have can be displayed. And, and, and so, and clients, your clients that actually bought a home with you can now write a review and it's transaction based. I'll get to that shortly. And we're the only one in the industry with that. As far as new agents, I actually am very excited to share this with you. If you're a new agent, raise your hand if you're six months into the business. Okay, there's something you can do right away on, on realtor.com. All your friends, family, or people that know that you're a good real estate agent or you're gonna be a real estate agent, would they be willing, those, that group of people, would they be willing to give you a testimonial, let's say? Yes, they would, wouldn't they? Probably all of them. So even if you're a new agent and has not done a transaction, you can either yourself, not them, post one of their written reviews about you. When I say review, I mean recommendation. It's a recommendation. There wasn't a, you didn't do business with them yet, but it's a recommendation about how great you are. You're very knowledgeable of the area, right? You've lived here 20 years, that type of stuff. And she's unbelievable to work with. I worked with her at, at another company, whatever it is. And not only do we accept written recommendations, we actually accept video 
meaning you could upload a video to your profile. Let me ask you a question. Do you think people in this area would be more compelled and excited to call you off of real people talking about you in a video versus reading it in text? Would you agree with that? Please raise your hand. Okay, most of you agree with that? I agree. 95% roughly of our communication is nonverbal. You get that in video. You don't get it in written text. And by the way, I think the majority of the people don't even want to read the text, but they'll watch a video. That's why YouTube blew up. That's why Google bought YouTube. Video is huge. Um, a, a, a lot of studies, I'm not going to quote anybody, but a lot of studies say that between 70 and 80% of internet traffic in 2017 will be video. And if, if you think about it, it's not going to really surprise you because think about the time you spent online, personally, and your kids, and your kids. How much of it is video? Well, you know, for the younger kids, they hear about Michael Jordan, and they, 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 they never, he never played when I was alive, so let's go back and see it. Now you see eight minutes of him dunking on people. I mean, you know, and many things like that, whatever it is, right? So again, video is huge. Agents with a mix, meaning if you do sales and buy sells and solds, uh, when provided by the MLS, we can display that on an activity map for you. And so you, it shows that you're busy, okay? Because you have, you have done a lot of, of listings and sold them. You have a lot of for sales. So that's gonna show on the map, show you're busy. And then really important with teams. This is, a, this is super important. And it seems like about 30 of the audience is either part of a team or a team leader. For teams, you get to add an additional profile, if you will, for each team member. So let's say you're a team of nine. Before on Realtor.com as, as your profile, it would just be you and it might mention you're a team. Now you can add the other eight. And, and it's kind of cool because maybe some people would either, clients would be even less likely to work with you, sorry, with your team member because, because you're the face of the team. You know what I mean? Oh, no, I'd rather work with Cheryl or whatever, whoever that team leader is. But now that they have a strong profile or in their picture and their bios on Realtor.com, it gives them a little bit of presence because would you agree that Realtor.com is pretty, a pretty credible thing, a somewhat credible thing across consumers? Yeah, it's pretty darn credible. So now they've got a profile, they've actually kind of got a, a presence, if you will, on, on Realtor.com, and that's going to be huge for teams if you ever become part of one and the ones in, in, in the room right now. So how does this help you? Here's a huge stat right here. This came from NAR Profile. 50% of consumers who use recommendations say it influenced their choice of agents, okay? So that's, that's buyers, that's sellers, that's anybody choosing an agent. The ones that use recommendations, half of them, half of them, said it influenced influence their decision. And that makes sense, just like the rest of the world works, like I said, with Yelp and Amazon and all these different review sites. So the new Find a Realtor beta search is here. Let's check it out. First of all, is that beautiful? I mean, it almost looks like you're searching for property on an awesome real estate website, but no, that's the Realtor search right there. So you, you can go ahead and type in a name, area served, and it's got a really nice, new, vibrant look to it that um, really, the new brand release we have with, you know, we have Elizabeth Banks that's really our spokesperson and, and the new brand with the red and black, it's, it's, just, it's just really nice to look at. It's, it's visually compelling. And then when you do a search, as you can see, now I mentioned something about photo. When you do a search for a realtor, let's say for an area, it defaults, the default is this, ones that have claimed their profile and added a photo. So by photo, that's the default. Okay, so you've, oh, that's why I'm saying all of you today should claim your profile and add a photo because that's how the default sort is. It sorts it by photo. So definitely do that. As you can see here, here's this industry first, nothing like it has been done, map-based realtor discovery. So they can go into the map and actually see the ones that you have for sale, for example, on this map. And the, the, obviously those are fake agents, Kelly Smith, but there they are. If I click on one of them, it'll go to their, what is called mini profile, which is really cool. And that's a mini profile right there on, on the bottom. Let me see if I have a pointer. That's a mini profile, it has a little bit. Now I can always just click that button and it'll go to their full profile. You can zoom on the map, just like you would on Google Maps. How cool is that? You can, you can do additional sorts. It defaults to the photo, but you could sort by language. You could sort by how many reviews you have. 
uh, you could sort by a lot of different uh, things, credentials. You could sort by the, a certain thing you have, like a credential, like a GRI or EPRO, for example. And um, the consumer can select one again and go to that profile, and then boom, they're one click away from your full profile with your cell phone number, all your information about you, all your specialties, all the languages you speak, all that stuff on this robust profile. So the power of these profiles, check this out. I wouldn't even be standing here if this wasn't mobile ready, okay? So it looks very, very nice on an iPhone and Droid, okay? And, and yes, the map does work on the iPhone and Droid. So they have a very similar experience, as good as possible with technology today, on the iPhone, Droid, or any tablet, okay? And that's how the profile, the full profile, looks on the, when you go to on, on a desktop or PC or Mac. Showcase your professionalism. Basically, it allows you to promote your, your brand with your, uh, the fact that you're a member of NAR and your MLS credentials. It allows you to showcase your expertise by displaying your recent sales, okay? So again, um, people want to, sometimes they want to see realtors that are getting after it and, and doing lots of sales. Obviously, if they're doing that, they're, they're probably doing it right and, and are, are providing good service for the most part. And then additionally, this is so cool. We are the first ever, and this is our, this is our Realtor.com brand for, its, for reviews and ratings. It's called Real Ratings, based off transactions. There's nothing like that in the industry. So in other words, you, you can't have a real rating unless that buyer or that seller had a transaction with you. Once they have a transaction with you, you can have them do a rating. So that's why they call them real ratings. Don't, now for, don't worry, for new agents, don't, you have the recommendation side. You can still post recommendations about you, saying wonderful things about you as a person and how you, what, you know the area, all those things I said, and upload video of people talking about how they would recommend you any day. You're a fantastic person. You know the area. You're a go-getter. You're a negotiator, whatever, whatever they want to say. By the way, those videos, don't make them four minutes. Okay, just, just, just make him 30 to 45 seconds. That's what we have time for, for something like that. That's what, that's what, that's what, we're gonna turn it off after about a minute. So just, so take out your droid, take out your iPhone, put it in front of their face, we'll let them know it's coming first. And then say, say something nice about me for like 30, 45 seconds. Like, would you recommend my service? And this is someone that likes you a lot and they're gonna do it. And then post that. Be the first to have a lot of videos on there. Do it. Because I can't think of anything more powerful unless you meet them in person. I mean, that's the only thing that's more powerful than having a video of people that love you and now they're willing to be in front of a camera and talk about you. Yes? You could do that at the closing table. Oh, that's, you took the words out of my mouth. What's the best time to ask for a video? At the closing table. <laughs> that's where they're most happiest or relieved. <laughs> right? One of the two. I mean, that's the time. That's the time. So we interviewed a lot of top realtors about that very question and almost all of them said, the day before closing, the day you get in the keys, <laughs> that's a good time. That's when they're at their, their happiest again or most, most relieved. Because, let's be honest, sometimes a real estate decision is not always positive. So it could be a relief. You know, someone potentially lost their job and they had to downsize because of that. So, you know, that's, a, that's important to understand. So, again, the first one that has it transaction-based, and we have that, that coin term, real ratings. Here's another look at the listing activity there. I just want to show you kind of how that looks in a map, and ironically, it matches the, uh, the Realtor.com new, new logo as far as colors, black and red there. And here are the recommendations. Now, this is for, important for you new agents. That's pretty powerful. Look at that. I mean, you can have a picture of the home. You can have, you could, you could have a picture of the person who gave the recommendation and then have the recommendation. And last but not least, what I love the most, you already saw my passion about it, video video. Do it at the time where they're really happy. It, oh, by the way, on video, don't do a second take. One take. One take. Be yourself. Just talk about me. If they stutter, who cares? That's what we want to see. We don't want to see something scripted that you wrote, right? We do not want to see someone be robotic and say what you wrote. We want to hear them how they really feel because, again, all that communication in video, you almost get the majority of that 95% nonverbal. You get that, and people want to see that, and they can see a fake, right? Just like Jack Miller said, we, uh, p consumers are starting to wonder if some of these reviews are fake, like that, that Mexican food restaurant I mentioned, where you know, the, the t they had 10 fives, but it was the, it was the, the daughter, the cook, the, I mean, they had 10 people he knew do the reviews. So again, um, one take. 
I recommend one take on video. Don't do a second. Just talk about me. Be honest. Say what you think of my services. Say what you think of, of me as a business person, whatever, however, depending on who they are. So the real ratings, very excited about this. It's qualified transaction-based feedback from actual clients. It's the only system that does this. And so, again, I mentioned they have to have a transaction with you, and then they can do this. By the way, there is a feature within your profile, I love this, where you can invite them to basically do this. So instead of having to find your profile, you can send a link and say, here's where you do a real rating. And they would go right in, right? Because maybe some people don't even want to take the time to try to find your profile. Does that make sense? You, from your profile, as a profile manager, because you own it, can send a transaction client a link. Does that make sense? So it's easier for them. Coming soon, I love this because I think this is important. Agents will have the ability to respond to a real rating. Why is that important? I think responding to a positive rating shows empathy, compassion, and heart. It's one thing to have this, uh, let's say it's two paragraphs about how wonderful you are. But for you to respond and say, thank you, Sally. I, I really enjoyed you know, working with you. I'm glad we found your dream home. The other people are going to read that. I mean, people that are looking at reviews are going to read that and say, wow. In the back of their head, they're saying, you know what? This agent, they took the time to actually respond to that review. That's pretty cool. Uh, so I would respond to every review. Once that's up and running in any other review site where you get a positive review, respond to it. Now, um, real quick, I didn't know I was going to say this, but uh, on negative reviews, if someone gives you a negative review that's not true, and l let me just say this. Let's say the review, and, and this, is, uh, this is a sample agent. This is out of the sky agent. Cheryl was the worst realtor I ever worked with. She showed me all the wrong homes. She pressured me to buy all the time. The whole thing was a wreck. Do not use Cheryl. Ouch. I mean, that is a tough one to overcome, right? And then it's one of those review sites where you're allowed to respond, and you say, no, I didn't. You're a liar. I gave you the best service I've ever given anybody, and you are not appreciating it. Darn you. Who's the audience believing right now? Man, I mean, do you really want to stoop to their level? Probably not. So in that case, based off of a lot of surveys of realtors and brokers across the country, in that case, the best thing to do, if you cannot delete that lie, are you with me? Overwhelm them get another 15 reviews that are positive or kind of positive positive and push that sucker down if you can't delete it. Uh, in some cases, there are, there are review sites that will allow you to work with them to delete a malicious review. And I, I, this is not applying to you, all of you right now, but someone in this room, I guarantee it has had someone actually say something negative that was not true. Maybe they had an experience with something else. They had, some, they had experience with uh, the fact that uh, some of the paperwork was wrong and whatnot, and it had nothing to do with you, but now they bash you. For whatever reason, keep that in mind. Don't stoop to their level. So coming soon is replying, I think, yes. Yeah. Wow. So, so her question is this, the, the, she has clients, or at least, at least one or more clients that don't even email, and she's asking, how do I get that review up? Here's my best suggestion to you. I'm almost positive, check with your office manager or whoever you, know, you report to, and I'm almost positive you need their permission, okay, and if you have written permission, and then I believe on a lot of these review sites, you're allowed to post it, again, if you have proof of permission, does that make sense? So, and it, ver and it does vary a little bit state to state. So check with your office manager on that, but that's what I've heard other, other realtors doing. So then you would post it, you'd post the exact words that they gave you permission for on that review for someone who's not tech savvy enough to be able to email you. Or, or really, it's because what she's saying is that the way it works is that she's in her profile manager, she wants to send them a link, but they don't even check email. How do you, how do, you do that? So again, get their permission, uh, but most importantly, talk to someone like an office manager or maybe even someone on the board here and ask to, because of state law and just doing the right thing and not getting in trouble for something that you had no business even doing, okay? Yes. 
So check with someone with, with you, check with your office manager, check with someone in the association. Yes. We, we have to have their email address. And, they, and, and actually, they have to have a, a password as well. In order to do a rating, for you that are new agents and experienced agents that got all excited about uploading recommendations and video on the recommendation side, not real ratings, guess what? You upload that. That's what's really cool. So that's going to happen. You can make that happen tomorrow. Okay, Start doing that right away. These other ones, they're transaction-based. And yes, they do need to be legit with an email password, etc. Make sense? Exactly right. To repeat that, I think it's worth repeating. She can do recommendations with past clients, with past with, with current friends, even your mom. You can, you can post her up there as a recommendation, right? But with real ratings, you can't do that. It has to be transaction based Right, and so they have to be an actual client. Okay. So to get a real rating, does the agent have to donate the link to go out? No. no. Great question. She's asking, and I love repeating the question so you guys all get it. She's saying, for the real ratings, do they have to get the link from you to do a real rating? No. They can do it from your profile in your profile manager, and and don't. It's legit. Hold on. It's legit. Like they have to have the address, for example. They have to have the transaction date and certain other fields that make sure that it was a real one. So you can't have someone who wants to, you know, do something, bash you for some reason, and, and go and, and fake one. So it's, it's legitimate where they need the credentials, the information that shows a transaction happened. Make sense? Okay. So uh, I, I'm really, really excited to say this, and, and that is the fact that not only do we have the only transaction based uh, with this realtor.com profile where it's, where it's real ratings, not only do we have the first map search of this kind, it's, it's extraordinary and very compelling, but we're the only review rating system, real rating, is the only one that meets the NAR guidelines and NAR members helped us build it. That makes sense. Why not? They're pretty intelligent. They know what they're doing. So in other words, they were a big part of creating this. So we want to thank NAR for that because that's a lot of the reason why it's this robust. Their help, very experienced people, some former agents, former realtors, right? Um, as far as I know, some could certainly uh, currently be in real estate. I'm not sure about that, but again, NAR members helped create this. Thank you for that. We appreciate it. Now, what's new and what's coming? Right now, you can pr promote your personal brand with those recommendations from past clients, from friends, from relatives. Why not? It, it, why not? I mean, they're going to give you stellar recommendations. And, you know, maybe some people say, oh, that's their mom. But if you have 15 others that are friends and maybe former coworkers, maybe, you're, maybe you used to be a teacher and you have seven teachers that love you at that school. Why not let them do a, a recommendation, not a review, because it's recommendation side. Let them do a recommendation about how great of a teacher you were and how easy you were to work with. Just things that would help you, again, convince someone to call you. Showcasing your trustworthiness and exper experience by having your, re your recent sales displayed on the map is pretty cool. It shows a lot of credibility that you're getting after it in that market, in that area, that you are an experienced agent. Very cool. That, that first impression, we talked about that. That's why you have today. You have to claim your profile. Add your photo at least, and do, at least do a short bio today. At least do that. Maybe you can fill it out more complete, but all of those things are very important for that first impression when they Google your name and add Realtor at the end, or even your name. And let's say Realtor.com comes up top three. A lot of people are going to go there, okay? So it's very important to have that photo. And claim it and the bio added as well. The real rating, we talked about it. It's transaction-based, awesome. We're very stoked about it. And we're, it's just going to get better and better uh, and more robust as we're working with uh, the Austin board on a daily basis, getting this just dialed in. And NAR, of course. And then coming soon is the, the ability to respond. And again, I, I think that shows the compassion. If you take the time to respond to a positive review, I think that's only going to help you. And it shows people that you care and you took the time to do so. Why should you claim it? I didn't mention this yet. Over a million searches a month, not for property, for realtors on realtor.com. Her face just lit up. She's like, wow, really? Yeah, a million are searching for you. That means at least 
at least hundreds here, but maybe thousands here right in this market are searching. You want to come up first. You want to come up higher. Remember that, that default sort when they go in to the actual realtor.com, they're going to actually be sorted by photo. You don't have a photo. You're going to come after all the agents that upload their photo. So that's a no-brainer. We talked about your personal brand. We talked about video. You saw me get all excited about video. Do that, please. Do that. Go out to the people you know, the people that love you, the people that trust you, and have them do a short video, 30 to 45 seconds. Showcase your trustworthiness. We talked about this as far as whether it's a, a, a buy or sell, and we're working more with, with uh, the Austin board on the, on the sell side, and uh, we'll have great information coming soon on that. But again, showing your exper expertise. The first impression is also mobile friendly. Can you believe that in this past year, for the first time ever, more people are searching for property on droids, iPhones, and tablets than all computers combined? Wow, that was just blew my mind. I mean, that is unbelievable. I, I, would, I would venture to guess that 13 short years ago, that number was 0%. Would you agree? Now it's over 50. Wow. So everything has to be mobile ready. I'll take that one step further. Go make sure that your website is mobile ready. Make sure it's easy to navigate. Make sure the property search on your, your personal website is easy to use and not just like, where do I go? It's pinch and zoom and I pinch in and I see your head this big and where did I, you know? So check with your webmaster, check with whoever does your website and make sure you are mobile ready because again, more people are accessing properties on mobile now. That means more and more are accessing realtors there the same way. And then as far as the new real rating system, we're, again, we're gonna build that out. And, and again, the only system, the only rating system in the country of all the national real estate portals that has it transaction-based. Very cool. So, We, that's something that we're working on as far as going back for the, uh, the transactions. And we're, we're still having, even, uh, we're not even sure how far we're gonna go back indefinitely. R remember one thing, you guys are lucky to be beta. This is all new, okay? Now we're working with the Austin board, we're working with the National Association of Realtors to come up with really the best overall consumer experience, right? Obviously, as you can see, we're putting the realtor slam right in the middle. <laughs> And we're, and we're gonna do that. And that's why what happens when you, when you search, again, realtor name, realtor, you're gonna get such good Google love, Google juice, if you know what I mean. So more to come on that. Is that fair, Suzanne? So currently, currently what I understand is it's set, again, this is beta, currently it's set that you can go six months back. And, and we're working, fo working forward to making that more like two years. But again, I wouldn't, don't write it down. It's not in stone, but that's where we're currently at. And, and again, we're working again on the best consumer experience. What's best for them? What do they want to see? Is that a question or are you stretching? <laughs> I, as uh, in this beta program, I'm not positive we made a decision on that, but as far as I know currently, if it's a realtor and they're your friend, we allow friends to do reviews. So I don't see any problem with that right now. I just don't know if that's gonna be official, uh, the way to go. But hey, you know what? You just mentioned a great idea. I mean, how, how awesome is that? You go and <laughs> you go to the recommendations and there's another realtor saying, she's awesome. I've done three transactions with her. They all were awesome. We, the buyers were happy, the sellers were happy, it's great. So that's a great idea, I like that. So more to come on that as well. Best takeaways from today. I wanted to come up, oh, before we do that, let's get one more question. The question is, are we allowing more than one rating per transaction? Meaning one transaction, would you allow a husband and wife to both do a separate rating? I think the way it's set up, it has to be within the same rating. You could, you, could, um, you, could, you could mention that both the husband and wife are rating within the rating, but I, currently in the beta version, I believe it's not set up where you can have two for let's say the buyer side of the transaction. That's, that's, that's my understanding. But again, a lot of this, just get, forgive me because a lot of this is in beta mode right now. And again, we're, we're shooting for that ultimate consumer experience. But a great question, I like it. New home sales that are not MLS. Currently, right now, the real rating system, it has to be a transaction on the MLS. 
right now. And, and, and I'm, I'm, I'm sorry for that, but that's kind of the way that Realtor.com works with NAR, right? That, that's, that's, that's the agreement there. So the, the sales that are not in the MLS, we're not going to be able to get a real rating on. At least, I, I know currently, and I don't, I don't know of any plans to change that. Yes? Her, her question is, sometimes um, you'll have two agents working on a listing, the listing side, are you with me, right? So the listing side, uh, but there's one that has the MLS ID that's the official one for the MLS currently, and the way I understand it's going to work, at least going forward, is it's the, the one on the MLS, meaning the, the realtor who has their MLS ID attached to that listing on the MLS. Yes. And you're a member of that MLS? Oh, you're you're not a member of the MLS? And and what and what are you doing? Are you the official buyer side agent or the official listing side agent? Without an MLS ID? For that? Uh, that's a great question. She's asking, and, and, you know, these are some of the questions we can handle as well. In the um, we have, we're very excited. We have a whole room dedicated to you all to make sure majority of you, if not all of you, get your profile claimed. Get your photo uploaded in a lot of cases, right? Hopefully some of you have a photo of you that's awesome on your phone right now, for example. And then also at least do somewhat of a bio so you can get some of the, the, the juice going that you get just by doing that, both on Google, within the profile, when the, within the realtor search. Like I said, it's sorted by photos, meaning the ones with photos come first. So you guys are really lucky to be here and be part of the beta right now. Uh, another question? My understanding is that because it's one MLS ID and those team members don't have one, then they're going to be additional a, uh, um, team members within your within your profile. Okay, but but again, they'll have basically a profile for that team member. It just won't be the main one, which is the top the the, the realtor. I understand that's correct. Yes. Her, her question is. Oh, sure. So her question is this. If she is uh, the team lead, she has seven realtors that are filled out with, with profiles underneath her on realtor.com, and then she leaves that team, let's say goes to a different company, uh, what, she has to, what does she have to do then at that point? Don't ask me, man. Ask oh, me. I thought you were up here. <laughs> Say it again? Let me... So, so it sounds like your team can go with you and cha be changed over to a new MLS ID. And Andrew, the yes. reason I was coming up was trying to bear you out of this situation oh. so that you're not sitting here. One, so everybody knows we're going to have a two-hour session this afternoon. Um, and we're the Realtor.com folks are all back here. And the very specific questions you're asking are really, really important for this beta. I agree. Um, very important questions. And so some of them we don't really have the answers for. And I would ask you to do a couple of things. By the way, I'm Paul Hilgers. I'm the CEO. I want to thank you all for coming. I'm going to help wrap this session up right now. If you're about done, right? Yeah, I, I, just, want, I just want to say that uh, I want to just add to that, that your feedback is so important to us. It's huge. It will definitely affect what happens going forward. So I'm going to just give you in a, in a few minutes or maybe even one minute the ways you can do that. There's several different ways you can contribute and provide feedback. Does that make sense? Please do that. Just as important as, as getting your profile claimed in photo and bio, please help us because that'll just make it better for you and the other agents in the Austin board. That's great, Andrew. Thank okay. you very much. And I want to thank everybody for coming. Um, just a couple of points that I would like to make in, in wrapping this up. Um, I want everybody here to know that we really appreciate your presence, but we also appreciate the participation of over 300 uh, people who are watching this presentation online uh, in remote locations, uh, some of which are probably all across the country, so, um, and certainly in brokerages around Austin. It's the first event we've live streamed, and it's, uh, and then, again, another beta. Uh, being part of a beta is really a critical thing for our association to stay on the cutting edge of improving the real estate market 
And so we are very proud of the partnership we have with Realtor.com. Um, as we've said already, if you're not taking advantage of the profile, uh, today is your day. Uh, and, and in this room again today from 2 to 4, they're going to have a whole two-hour session on specifically answering questions about ratings and reviews and how this works. So please come back uh, and, 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 and witness that. So many things happening at the Austin Board of Realtors. We're extremely proud of the fact that the board embraced this opportunity for us and gave us a chance to help lead in the industry. We're proud of our affiliation, our association with Realtor.com. A lot of things to watch in October. Uh, one in particular I would ask you to look for is on October 19th, you will look for the new upgrade of ABOR.com. And so that is coming, and it's going live on October 19th. Uh, it's something else you've been waiting for for a long time. Uh, thank you so much for coming. We really appreciate your participation, and uh, we're very proud of the partnership we have with Realtor.com and look forward to working with them, I think, as you said, every day to make this beta a success. So thanks very much. Great. Yes, Tiffany. Come on. a question was this similar to the agent match uh, that realtor.com was doing a few years ago it is not it's a completely different system based off ratings and reviews um, with an enhanced profile and this profile is actually on steroids it's very different <laughs> from anything everybody else has I'm actually going to be talking with our local um, because it's better than ours um, in Houston we've been doing real real estate ratings for over six years um, over 25% of our members are participating and they are receiving great reviews, which we are very surprised. Um, your clients actually do think highly of you and thank you for what you do. But most importantly, we're getting referrals off of these guys and it's not costing us any additional dollars. And um, with putting this one together for Realtor.com, we looked at the major competitor, which was Zillow, and they have over a million reviews on their site. So we wanted to come up with something that was just as good as theirs but better so this is an all-new system it's not agent match it is agent ratings and reviews and it also allows you to receive recommendations so this is going to be a great system and we took into account new agents as well and that's why we have agent recommendations that are not tried to tied to transactions so all right that's awesome can I, can I just add one more thing take 30 seconds so for those of you who have to leave at some point today and can't get in the demo lab darn it sorry that's happening uh, visit realtor.com. We made the main domain name, so write this down if you have to leave. Forward slash agent profile to claim your profile. And while you're doing it, you can call this 800 number for help, 866-665-1738. There's also a Facebook site where you can provide feedback, but even easier, realtor profile at realtor.com. You can, you can give feedback and say, I do like this, I don't like this, at that, and, or you can again call 866-665-1738. So we want to hear from you. And by the way, see this in my hand? Everybody must leave with this. This is a lot of information about the new profile. It has a quick reference guide. And please, there's enough for everybody in the back of the room. Okay? So please, whether you're staying today or whether you're leaving, uh, have to leave early, please take this. Take the information. I want to thank you for your time. You've been a great audience and a lot of participation. I appreciate it. Uh, yes. Start thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Yeah. Thanks. That was awesome. Thanks.